conflict. We're in a situation. Wait a minute. Don't we want we want our children to be happy? Oh, we, we want, want food. I'm talking about that. Basically. All right. Okay. Okay. Now, to paraphrase Senator okay. Bradley of uh, New Jersey, the uh, state from which you your piece Senator was. Senator uh, Bradley gets much right when he talks. Uh, about yeah, he does, and he, among other things, and he's not claiming to be particularly original with the observation. We can't get there unless we go together. I have a terrible feeling that behind me are some people who do not agree. Senator, <laughs> Senator, <laughs> Sen excuse me. <laughs> Senator Bradley of the all-white United States Senate said we can't get there unless we all go there together. Sorry, none of us are where he is. That's number one. Number two, you're making an, a moral appeal mm -hmm. to a country that doesn't have a moral conscience. Right. The question becomes that when white people feel serious and angry and upset about abortion, they come out in the thousands up to the millions to say, this is what we believe about abortion. Where is the white outcry against white racism that murders African people all around this entire globe? It doesn't exist. So who are these white good people? I want to meet them. I want to I see know them. Too, I, was, I, I think it's too. not enough. But that's and, 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 that, that might be all we can get. Uh, you know, and best. guess what? I don't work with all I can get. Yes. What I work with is what, what I have. Listen, you have to have some confidence yes. in the power of African people amongst ourselves to establish a foundation. We have. I mean, no, we have it. We, we have, have utter chaos in our cities, and you've got There's to no see black that. Institutions we you can, build? can have a program. I black say, I'm not saying we've built a lot of institutions sure. and those institutions have not been effective. The majority of millions of African youth in this country are dying mentally, dying spiritually, dying emotionally, dying academically, and you may have a program, Mr. Brown may have a program, but what we got to talk about is an American government that tracks millions of African people who don't go to your program, don't go to Brown's program, millions of African people, not only here, but all around the world, and if we are not honest enough to say who are our friends, who are our enemies, to know what a friend is, to know what an enemy is, we will constantly be trying to get into people's parties, to shake our butts with them, to get them to like us, and that's not the question. The question is, what can we build amongst ourselves to secure ourselves from our enemies so that we will be able to survive into the future? What I heard Mayor from, Kelly, Mayor Kelly wanted to say. That's not what I heard from Cornell West. There are lots of oases of hope in spite of all of what Sister Soldier says is true. And the sad and pitiful part of it is that the 6 o'clock news, the 11 o'clock news, most of the media never gives attention to it. And if that weren't bad enough, we know that maybe white America is not going to believe that there are oases of hope where people are empowering themselves as we have in Washington, D.C., Jackie West taking over her own housing, leading to her own ownership in a community. But the sad and tragic part is that our own community buys into this sense of powerlessness. We surrender to the power of the white man as if we were not the descendants of the first civilization, as if we were not an empowered people. I never, of all. I never surrendered to anybody, but I'm wise enough to know that if I walk out Washington, D.C. tonight, some black kid in Washington, D.C. is blowing off another black kid's head for a pair of sneakers because the institutions that we're talking about, not the things that we hold up to say, look, this is one example. The institutions that we're talking about are not saving the minds of those African children. Well, look, that is the honest truth. You, you have, none of these Negroes saved me. None of these Negroes Your mother didn't help save you. None of them. Now, none you of did these it by Negroes, yourself. None of, listen, you know who saved me? A man named John DeSane in Inglewood, New Jersey, who told me who I was, who showed me my history, who told me who my enemies were, who let me know that this was not an easy world, who let me know that this was a cold environment, who let me know. Now, what he's not a part of is dilly-dallying with the minds of African children and letting them know what the real situation is in America. Where they will be killed if they do not know. He apparently left out some very important facts. He apparently left out some very important facts because I think that I hear everything that you're saying, but if you are going to tell me that in the course of this country's history through slavery, civil rights, and so forth and so on, everybody who's come before you, 
Everybody who's come before you sold this out, failed, etc., etc., then somebody hasn't told you your history. If the white power structure in this country is going to be said to have destroyed everything black, then you are indicting black That's people as well. We That's were, in fact, said. and we are you today engaged in a struggle. We are, in fact, point. and we don't were today in many you. ways, and you can see it on the street, engaged in a kind of warfare in which our survival is at stake. But don't tell me we have won no battles Nobody's in that war. You that. None you of us would be yourself. sitting here Nobody's at all. She, some people have I don't know if it's that. fair to suggest that, there's, it that she's saying there have been no victories. It lacks integrity, especially from a black man in a Republican party. But, 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 yes, it lacks wait, integrity. Hold, 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 yes. hold up, hold up. Let's just make something clear here. This woman has never said that we're supposed to disregard our victories and just focus on, on, on right. the failures. You can't have no justice in this country without equality, and you cannot have in this country any peace without justice. So when you talk, when this man sits over here and, 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 and tries to berate Sister Soldier and say, that what she is saying, okay, is that we haven't accomplished anything. The woman is basically saying that before you can liberate a people, you have to first liberate your mind and stop kissing the behind right. of white Republicans and white Democrats and thinking that you're getting ahead. This must be, this must be the time for the president of Boston University, John Silver, to make what point, sir? Well, I, I, want, to, I want to say that I, I think the, the, uh, the claim that there's no conscience among the white people in America is a great example of racism. I don't think the face of racism is any prettier when it's black racism than when it's right, no white racism. racism. And I'd like, to, I'd like to finish this. When Martin Luther King started his civil rights movement, he said. put his conscience before the American people and shamed an overwhelming majority of the white people yes. by the strength of his moral argument. And, then they and the elevation, the elevation, and, they killed them. and the elevation of his moral argument was based on many of the things that he had learned from the individuals he cited in the letter from a Birmingham jail. Plato, Socrates, Jefferson, Augustine, Amos, Isaiah, Jesus. Uh, he recognized very well that he was fighting for the reform of a racist American, America on the basis of the views held by the dominant white society and for that reason he reached them and he so he so transformed them that you could pass the civil rights legislation under oh, Lyndon so Johnson. Such a and, there no, and there is no, and there is no, and there is no point. his political uh, position evolved. He was killed and because if somebody, he became if more somebody independent wants, and, and more critical of the I, American. You know, why don't you let me finish? If if somebody you thinks that, that you, you refute you what started. I have to say, that if you think that that you refute what I have to say by pointing out that Martin Luther King was assassinated, I can point out to you that Malcolm X was assassinated. That's not the refutation. Of what you're saying. Man. He was assassinated you know, by a black man who hated white people. No, no, no. Let, so, let me say this. Let me, let, 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 I got to say this. Because we always go to white males to tell us what's happening. You see? Let me tell you something. This is such a lie, a crock of crap. Because the reason why the United States, the only reason why the political leadership in the United States conceded to integration, conceded to civil rights for black people, is because the majority of the people of the world in the 1960s were ascending to political power and independence. And the United States could not claim more leadership of the world and enslave black people in a system right. of Jim Crowism. Right. So don't make like they, that, Malcolm, that, that, that Martin Luther King appealed to the better uh, uh, half or the morality of white America. White America did what was expedient politically. Mr. Cole all wanted to say. I just wanted to say this. I, I've had, I have sat on panels on television 25 years ago and heard exactly the same today between white and black and within the ranks of black people. And that underlines what's on my mind today. I mean, walking in the poor streets of New York and Chicago nowadays, looking into the eyes of these kids, I just think to myself, nothing has changed. So many years, so many lives. I, I know you like to end these shows on some kind of optimistic note, but, you but can't I do can't, it. I right. feel despair. May I ask for the, may I ask the panel to comment on this? Here's what I think is, you wanted to say, Professor West. Yeah, see, despair is paralyzing. If, if, if it is as bad as we know and you say, that, that's precisely why we have to do something. That's precisely why rage as real and authentic as it is, cannot have the last word. We are people of hope. That's why we go to church on Sunday. That's why we party on Friday. That's why we come to these kind of little meetings. 
Because we've got to find some hope in this situation. Oh, awesome. there is, there and is the hope more. is grounded in and, and, and looking at the situation for what it is. Dr. Rage is not a marketable commodity. As we started this program, I said there's been a lot of growth and a lot of change in the way people People of different incomes, African-American people, live in suburbs and cities. And there's a lot to build on. I think Cornell West is right. I think you're too hard on it. I think Tony Brown is talking about things that are happening and can happen and that we can build on. I, I, 25 years ago, I wasn't a member, but I was the research director of the Kerner Commission. And I do not believe that things are worse. And I think that uh, uh, we...